Now the two games I mostly cover on this channel are The Legend of Zelda and the Super Mario games. But could these two games be connected in a way? Are they set in the same world, or did one of the two ever visit the other's universe? Well, there are some strange connections, so let's have a look. Quick announcement, I do a live stream on Twitch every Friday where we play all kinds of fun games like Breath of the Wild and Super Mario 64. So come hang out and be sure to follow me there or on Twitter or Instagram to know when I'm live. The world of Mario, also known as the Mushroom Kingdom, is one of the largest kingdoms and is under the rule of Princess Peach. It's known to change its landscape, not keeping the same formation from one game to another. Despite this, the kingdom comprises of many similar reoccurring landscapes such as plains, deserts, islands, forests, mountains, snowy areas and volcanoes. And then we have Hyrule, the world of Zelda once known as the surface. This is the name of the kingdom that serves as the iconic setting for a majority of the games. It is usually depicted as a beautiful and prosperous land, blessed with deep forests, tall mountains, vast lakes, a barren desert, great cities, villages and many ancient temples hidden throughout. However, there are more different worlds around the Kingdom of Hyrule, and this also goes for the Mushroom Kingdom. And we are going to take a look at these two different worlds to see if there is a connection between the two. So let's start with an item that we see in both games, the Recorder. In The Legend of Zelda it's hidden in the depths of level 5 in the first quest, and earlier in level 2 in the second quest. However, we also see it in Super Mario Bros 3, and here it's a rare item. But it's originally from The Legend of Zelda, and the six notes played in both games are identical to each other. This also goes for the whirlwind it summons that whisks the player to another location. And this is the item that made me dig deeper. It looks, sounds and does the exact same as the one from The Legend of Zelda. So how did it get there? Or the other way around, how did it end up in Hyrule? Well the recorder was found in the countries around the Mushroom Kingdom that had their own kings. And in The Legend of Zelda it was found in Hyrule. But in this version of the kingdom, the world was kind of destroyed and they even call it an Age of Chaos. Now one of the ways the recorder could have ended up in the Mario world is that Super Mario Bros takes place in the same world, but in the far future. This is because the Legend of Zelda series has an entire timeline that spans thousands of years and the original Legend of Zelda is at the very end of an alternate universe which was in decline. However, there still rests a curse on the world of Zelda, which we don't see in the Mario games. We don't see Ganon or Demise, so it's not likely. However, there's a second option, an alternate universe, and there's one at the beginning of the Zelda timeline where the main villain died and would never return. Since Link the hero used a powerful artifact known as the Triforce to destroy him forever. We don't really know what happened in this world. It's a blank canvas. Almost anything could happen there. And it could be that the recorder was already hidden somewhere in the world around that time. But still, it's not very likely, it's just an option. Since anything could happen there. But this is only one piece of evidence connecting the world of Mario and Zelda. That's not enough. So that's why there are a couple more instances where we see a connection. And before you type that comment, Easter eggs and spin-off games are not included. If we look at the Zelda games, we can find Mario enemies there. And one of them is the Chain Chomp, and we see it in multiple games actually. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening features three domestic chomps. And The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures and The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past feature Chain Chomps as enemies that Link must avoid. So we see these enemies in multiple canon games. No spin-off stuff. The only one that doesn't count is Link's Awakening. That one takes place in a dream world that's completely fake and disappears at the end of the game. But the other two take place in Hyrule and are actually placed far apart in the timeline, which makes it a bit weird. Where did they go in the meantime? Why aren't they seen in the other games that come after? Well, I have no idea to be honest. But the Chain Chomp is not the only one. There are a ton more scattered throughout all kinds of games. Enemies like the Pokey, Babom, Thwomp, Lakitu, Cheep Cheep and more. Most of these are seen in multiple games. 
They are not really a cameo or an easter egg anymore at that point, since there's a clear pattern and they're quite a big part of the game as well. Another great piece of evidence are the star bits from the Galaxy games and the Gratitude Crystals from Skyward Sword. They're the exact same and both come from the sky. Sadly enough, we only see them in one game, but it's certainly a good sign. However, they can also be created in Skyward Sword by helping people, so that's the only thing that's different. And then you have all the other evidence which is a bit questionable. The more easter egg and reference stuff. For example, the fact that Malin and Talon from Ocarina of Time wear a Bowser brooch, or the Mario mask the Happy Mask salesman has in Majora's Mask. And then there's the various portraits of characters from the Mario series that can be found in Princess Zelda's courtyard in Ocarina of Time. One of Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Peach and Bowser. These things don't count in my opinion, since we only see these in one game and just to reference the Mario games. However, is it even possible that the Mushroom Kingdom and the Kingdom of Hyrule are connected? They certainly have connections, with an artifact being found in both games and a ton of the same species being found in the worlds. Well actually, there's one thing in both games that makes it completely possible and it would explain everything. The two kingdoms are most likely set in the same universe, but they are two separate countries. So we are not talking about an alternate or parallel universe, or that one was set in the past and the other in the future. It is most likely all happening around the same time, but the two kingdoms are just far away from each other, and this would explain why they never collided. In both games we visit different kingdoms that are set in the world. Think of Labrina, a land featured in The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. And these are just two examples, there are way more. And for the species, well, they likely ended up there in their travels. We call this an introduced species. This is a creature living outside of its natural habitat, which has arrived there by human activity, either deliberately or accidental. A real world example of this is the black rat, which is most likely one of the first invasive species. They originally were from tropical Asia, however it likely reached Europe by hitching rides on European ships. And so they arrived there, adapted to the situation, and now there are thousands of them. There's a huge chance that the exact same happened to the Mario enemies that we see in the Zelda games. This could have happened thanks to the Hylians themselves, maybe the Toads, or they ended up there on their own. It kind of depends how far apart the two kingdoms are, as something similar most likely also happened with the artifact. And the star bits and the gratitude crystals? Well, those can be found in both regions then. And maybe this is an indication that they are closer to each other than we think. They are certainly a huge hint towards the two being set in the same world. They are exactly the same. The only thing different is their name. And that could be because of the language difference. So are they really set in the same world? Could they be connected? Well, there are a lot of things hinting towards it and maybe we will learn more about it somewhere in the future. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, since we're trying to get to 100k before my birthday, which is June 17. So let's give it a shot. 